Let us continue our discussion on crystal structures. We have already discussed the simple oxide structures and some alkali halide structures. Let us go to little bit of complex structures and to start with we will uh, have uh, a fluoride structure what we call fluoride structure once again just like sodium chloride structure it is called the rock salt structure. Fluoride is also a mineralogical name of calcium fluoride CaF2. Okay. So, the fluoride structure can also be described more or less in the same fashion. Of course, the unit cell is little complex, but uh, one can discuss more or less following the same principle. Here, fluorine is a cation, sorry, the anion, and calcium is the cation. Calcium has a smaller size compared to fluorine. If you look at this structure to start with, you can see fluorine ions being larger ions, they form the skeleton and forms a cubic symmetry. So, it is once again a cubic symmetry just like sodium chloride structure, where chlorine ion forms the skeleton of a cube. And, uh, but unlike sodium chloride, sodium do not go to the octahedral side or calcium do not go to the octahedral side. Its size is slightly bigger than sodium and therefore, it does not go to the octahedral side, but it goes to the body center position. Here it is the calcium ion. So, it is actually a body center position. Now, if you go to the body center position or body center structure, BCC structure, you will find the contribution of the fluorine ions to this particular unit cell is 1, 1 eighth into 8 that gives you 1 fluorine ion. And the calcium being at the center of the cube, it not shared by any other neighboring unit cells. So, its contribution to this particular unit cell is also 1. So, if this particular unit cell is repeated in the volume, then the chlorine sorry the fluorine is to calcium ratio should be 1 is to 1 in the compound. However, we have a different molecular formula CaF2 that means, there are double the number of fluorine ions compared to the cat, uh, calcium ions and that gives a different kind of situation. So, that in the cubic structure when you try to repeat them one after the other, then the it can be described in the following manner. Calcium ions do not sit in all the cubes. Okay. In this particular example, we have seen the calcium ion is sitting at the center of the cube formed by the fluorine ion. Unfortunately, what will happen in the next neighboring site or next neighboring unit cell, the calcium ion will be missing, it will be vacant. So, that each alternate cubes have a calcium ion. So, calcium ions are not in the all the cubes, only in the alternate cubes whether you go in the x direction, y direction or z direction. Right. So, that is the structure and that has been seen that has been demonstrated in the left figure here. So, this is not the unit cell, this is the part of the unit cell, whereas this complicated uh, looking structure is actually the unit cell. So, chlorine ion, uh, calcium ion are not always at the all the corners or uh, all the uh, body center positions of the cube, but it is only in the uh, alternate cubes. So, it says here uh, the fluorite CaF2 structure is named after the mineral calcium fluoride CaF2 the structure 
may geometrically be considered to constitute a closed packing of the metal ions, while the anions occupy all the tetrahedral sides. You can this is a different description than what is been given here. Okay. Here the it says the calcium ion is larger and fluorine ion goes to the tetrahedral sides. The calcium ions are smaller than the fluorine ions and the fluoride ions are thus not able to fit into the interstices of the calcium ions. The structure can also be viewed as a simple cubic packing of the anions not close packed within the cations uh, with the cations occupying every second or the alternate cube void. That is what the description I gave you just now. This is the second part of it, but the structure can also be viewed in a slightly different way because this is an one exception situation where calcium ion is a much bigger than the fluorine ions. Okay. So, normally anions are bigger than the cations, here the cations is slightly bigger than the anion and as a result anion goes to the interstitial sites that is one way of describing the structure. The same structure can be viewed in different ways. Anyway, so this is the particular uh, way you can describe the arrangement of calcium and fluorine ions in a calcium fluoride structure. Now, this is what we call a structure type. There are many compounds, several compounds which actually um, crystallizes in this particular structure. One of the very important characteristics of this kind of a structure is that since calcium ion is sitting on alternate sides and uh, alternate sides are vacant. So, there is a channel kind of through the structure there is a lot of void space and that void is not distributed is along a particular direction. And these void space are because quite important for ionic mobility. Okay. Sometimes these voids uh, are beneficial for the movement of the ions where if you heat these materials at a higher temperature then atoms can move through these voids. We will see later on how the atomic movement takes place and what is the role of crystal structure or um, imperfections. Uh, Crystal stuff, crystals are not always perfect, there will be always some imperfections and that is the rule of the game and uh, that is imperfections are much more common than a, having a perfect crystal. It is almost impossible to get a perfect uh, crystal, but imperfections are always there. We will discuss part of it uh, at a later class. Uh, so, in addition to that the structural features are also important uh, for the movement of the cations or movement of the anions in this particular case. So, we will discuss that when we will discuss the property. So, that property is actually derived from this particular uh, typical stru critical structure. Now, as I said the it is a structure type fluoride structure type and some of the uh, important oxides which uh, uh, crystallizes in this particular fashion or in this particular arrangement uh, are uh, zirconium dioxide, cubic particularly the cubic form, cerium dioxide and THO2. You will all find that the cationic to anionic ratio is always 1 is to 2 in all these oxides as in CaF2. Okay. So, uh, this all this have a particular structure and they have also some common characteristics, common property characteristics. We will discuss that later and you will find that uh, these oxides because of the structural similarity they have certain similarity in uh, electrical properties in particular. Now, we have mentioned here zirconia cubic because many of these oxides do have different polymorphs. That means, at different temperatures, I mentioned uh, in an al in an earlier class that uh, uh, iron has different polymorphs. At low temperature, it has a BCC structure, at uh, higher temperature above 900 degrees, it has a FCC structure. Similarly, zirconia also has different structures. Zirconia 
uh, have different arrangements of atoms at different temperatures. At room temperature, it has a monoclinic crystal structure. So, the CAF2 structure is not valid, although the chemical composition is same, but uh, the structure is different. Uh, we will discuss that maybe at a later stage, how uh, the polymorphic changes takes place in zirconia. And they, that is the reason we have mentioned that zirconia in the cubic form, when it is particularly in the cubic form and that is a very high temperature stable form above uh, maybe 20, 2500 degree centigrade, uh, zirconia has a cubic polymorph and that has this uh, fluoride structure. And that is not so in case of CO2 or THO2 thorium oxide. Uh, CO2 throughout is a fluoride structure, uh, same is the case with thorium dioxide. Next we come to another structure, once again the similar molecular formula. Uh, this was CaF2, but this is TiO2. And uh, one of the polymorphs of TiO2 has is called rutile, rutile structure. This of course is not a cubic structure. Incidentally, uh, it is not a cubic structure. All so far we have discussed only cubic structure, but this is a deviation from the cubic structure. And a rutile structure has its name from the rutile modification or a particular structure type of titanium dioxide TiO2. It is based on a hexagonal, a hexagonal closed packing structure. It is not a closed pack structure although, okay, but it has certain similarity with the hexagonal symmetry. Uh, in fact, the symmetry is basically a tetragonal symmetry. Uh, well, titanium ions occupy every second octahedral void. Okay, here again we come back to an oxide and so, uh, the titanium ions or the metal ions or the cations are much smaller than the oxygen ions. So, they go to the and the radius ratio is such that it occupies octahedral side rather than tetrahedral side. So, titanium ion goes to the tetra octahedral side. So, the structure can be viewed as consisting of TiO6 octahedra. So, there are 6 oxygen surrounding a titanium ion. So, that is a preferred uh, coordination number for titanium, particularly titanium 4 plus, and then that octahedra slightly distorted. It is again not a very regular octahedra, it is not a symmetric octahedra, it is distorted, which share edges and corners in such a way that each oxygen atom belongs to three neighboring octahedron. Okay. We have seen earlier in case of a cube, the corner atoms a corner oxygen or corner atoms uh, share 8 oxygen, 8 unit cells. Here, uh, they are belonging to uh, share 3 neighboring octahedra. The structure is tetrahedral uh, and when the structure is viewed along the C axis, it may be seen that the structure contains channels along the C axis. Once again, it has uh, chan this channel in a particular direction means that basically they have an anisotropic property. That means in different directions they will have different properties because they are not symmetric completely. So, uh, it has certain um, anisotropic property along the C direction, but this is the symmetry is basically uh, uh, tetragonal. Okay. So, these are titanium ions at the corners and oxygen actually surrounds in uh, or titanium ion is uh, surrounded by 6 oxygen, although this is a different description. You see one has to remember that according to our convenience, we describe this structure sometimes the cations at the corners and or anions at the corners. We have this uh, seen earlier that most of the cases the cations or the anions we put in the corner position, but here the cations or the titanium has been put in the corner position. Uh, rest of the description is not that important, but except that it has a tetragonal uh, symmetry and uh, uh, titanium has a octahedral coordination. Okay. 
So, most of the time it is not the symmetry only which is important particularly for complex oxide you will find symmetry is not always very important. More importantly we need to know what is the coordination number, coordination number of the uh, cations involved or what is the coordination number of the oxygen. That means, how many cations are surrounding an oxygen ion and how many oxygen is surrounding a cation. So, this is the way we normally describe the uh, structure of some dioxides. There are quite a few oxides which crystallizes which has this TiO 2 once again this is a structure type ok, it is a rutile structure. So, if you have to say that what is the uh, structure of MnO 2 uh, one can very easily say it is a rutile structure that describes everything ok, you do not have to go to the description of the symmetry, description of the position of the ions, position of the cations and the anions you do not have to do it because they are identical. So, SnO 2 just like TiO 2 is a rutile structure, MnO 2, VO 2, molybdenum dioxide, ruthenium oxide, germanium dioxide all of them have this particular structure. Their lattice parameters may be different of course, their exact distances between the uh, cation and the anion or two cations may be different, but basic symmetry remains same. So, that is how one can always describe the structure of an oxide or other compounds as well. We go to another type of structure which is a very important structure incidentally and uh, it is a very important compound as such aluminum oxide and the mineralogical name of one form of aluminum oxide that is called the alpha aluminum oxide there are alpha beta gamma, gamma aluminum oxide is also there um, having a different crystal structure it is more of a cubic structure and in this case alpha aluminum oxide which is the most common variety of aluminum oxide and the mineralogical name for that is corundum. So, um, this is the structure of corundum in which oxygen ions are arranged in again HCP. So, symmetry must be also known and then uh, the coordination number of the cation and the anion uh, should also be uh, known that is how actually we describe uh, the structures. So, it is a uh, corundum structure in which oxygen ions are arranged in HCP and aluminum ions are in the octahedral coordination once again. Now, in an HCP structure we have seen earlier whether it is HCP or a closed back structure. Uh, or a, a FCC structure, the face center cubic structure, both of them are closed pack structure and there are as many number of octahedral sites as there are uh, oxygen sites. Okay. So, if oxygen, oxygen creates a HCP structure, so the number of oxygen in an unit cell will be the same as that of the number of tetrahedral octahedral sites because you have seen earlier the number of octahedral site and the number of anions are same in uh, FCC structure. Same is the case with the HCP structure because both of them are closed packed structure. They are identical structure except as we discussed earlier that there is a change in stacking one is ABC, ABC stacking another one is ABAB stacking, but otherwise uh, they are identical. So, the number of octahedral sites available to us is will be the same as the number of oxygen ions in a molecule. So, the compound has a molecular formula which is Al 2 O 3 that means, number of cations to the number of anions is 2 is to 3. Now, if you have uh, same number of octahedral sites as that of oxygen or uh, the basic which forms the basic skeleton, then the molecular ratio should have been ALO, but it is not the molecular formula is Al2O3. Therefore, the number of aluminum ions occupying 
occupying the octahedral sites are actually two third okay, because the ratio is two third. So, two third of the octa available octahedral sites are actually occupied by the aluminum ions whereas, one third is remain vacant. So, that is another very important feature of uh, corundum structure in which it basically a hexagonal closed back structure where aluminum ion goes to two third of the available octahedral sites and all the tetrahedral sites because any closed pack structure will have two types of interstitial sites octahedral site as well as tetrahedral sites. Aluminum goes to the tetrahedral site, but that is the that uh, it satisfies the tetra conditions of the um, radius ratio of the octahedral sites. So, it does not go to the tetrahedral site. Okay. So, all the tetrahedral sites remain vacant whereas, only two third of the octahedral sites are occupied by the aluminum ions. So, that is uh, how one can describe uh, the corundum structure and uh, otherwise it is although it looks quite complex there are bond uh, bonds between the uh, cation and the anion are being shown as in any other uh, structure, but they are basically for example, here you can see this is the aluminum ion and it is uh, surrounded by 4 uh, oxygen ions in the octahedral form. So, all the ox tetra, uh, aluminum ions which are uh, shown here are actually surrounded by uh, 6 uh, oxygen ions. Now, these are also surrounded by 6 oxygen ions, but some of them occup some of them belongs to this unit cell others should be belong to the neighboring unit cell. So, the aluminum ions which are sitting on the edge are actually surrounded by some oxygen ion of, of this particular unit cell and few others from the neighboring unit cells, but all of them will have octahedral coordination and whatever available octahedral interstitials are there only two third will be filled up. So, that is how one can uh, describe Al 2 O 3 and there are quite a few oxides uh, which are uh, have this structure. Okay. So, far we have been discussing only a simple oxides where only there are one type of cation present okay. either um, uh, either barium, strontium or aluminum. So, there are simple oxides what we call the simple oxides. Now, we go to another group of oxides which are normally referred to as complex oxides that means, oxygen of course, is the only cation in all these oxides, but uh, sorry all the oxygen is the only anion present, but the cations may be more than one. So, this is one such compound is called A B O 3 that is the general formula uh, of the compound, where A is basically a uh, divalent ion. A is divalent and B is uh, tetravalent okay, like this okay. and the perovskite is called the perovskite type just like fluoride is calcium fluoride and uh, rock salt is sodium chloride. Calcium titanate has a mineralogical name called perovskite and it is a very important group of compound very important group of mixed oxides which are many many different applications and many different properties uh, later on we will see. That. So, we must understand what is this uh, how do we describe the atomic arrangement in these kind of compounds. So, calcium titanate where A is the calcium the general formula of these all these groups of titanates there are titanates, tanates and so on. So, uh, one of them is uh, a alkali metal oxides okay. uh, calcium, calcium is divalent. So, it can be replaced by barium, it can be replaced by strontium and so on, uh, magnesium 
uh, other one is titanate, uh, titanium 4 plus. Okay, so, 2 plus plus 4, 4 plus and then it is 3 minus uh, 2 minus. So, what is the description? Description is well relatively simple once again uh, it is a cubic symmetry. First of all it is a cubic symmetry not hexagonal symmetry it is a cubic symmetry and calcium and oxygen we have seen earlier calcium the size of the calcium is fairly large. Okay. Size of the calcium is fairly large and that is the reason with fluorine it is more than fluorine. Okay. So, the calcium is very close to that of oxygen and therefore, if when we are talking about a cubic symmetry both calcium and oxygen together forms the cubic symmetry or a closed packed structure. If you look at this particular part of the diagram you will see the these are calcium the dark ones are calcium lighter ones are oxygen. So, these are oxygen or it can be reversed also uh, in this case I think this is oxygen these dark ones are oxygen and these are calcium okay. the lighter ones are actually calcium it is not somehow not written. Uh, so, this is uh, your titanium titanium sits at the center of the cube okay. body center of the cube here and these are oxygen the oxygen are on the face center center of the faces of the cube and corners are occupied by the calcium. So, calcium goes to the corner oxygen goes to the face center and titanium goes to the body center center of the cube and that is how titanium is six fold coordination. Okay. Titanium has a six fold coordination and uh, calcium are at the center. Now, that is why in the bottom you can see this is the six fold octahedron, okay. it is a bipyramid kind of uh, structure. Uh, this is a square pyramid, the base is square. So, you have four uh, oxygen ions, one in the top and one in the bottom. Okay that is how it forms the octahedron. So, that is a typical structure of octahedron or uh, regular octahedron it can be distorted also in some cases. Uh, so, that is the description of calcium titanate and this has been represented in this manner in a slightly different manner, but the same structure is there. So, uh, more or less it is the same thing occupy you can see the description is also given titanium 4 plus occupy the body center position which is in octahedral coordination. Okay. Uh, there are a few more um, diagrams uh, here instead of earlier we have seen two layers here is a three layer. Uh, so, this is one unit cell this is another unit cell and this is a three unit cell. So, this is repeated here you can see the octahedron this is another octahedron and then octahedron. So, T i 6 minus uh, octahedron or you can written here as a polyhedron. So, these are oxygen ions at the body center the corners are calcium and titanium uh, is a much smaller ion much smaller than both oxygen and calcium. So, they goes to the octahedral side okay. once again all the octahedral sites are not occupied. Okay. There are as many as uh, six octahedral sites, uh, eight, uh, four octahedral sites in this structure, but only one of them is occupied. Rest are remaining vacant, and all the tetrahedral tetrahedral sites are also remaining vacant. So that's another way of looking at it. So there are a lot of voids. There are voids present in the structure. Yes. Uh, although oxygen and calcium are in closed packed position but uh, rest of them uh, are uh, really voids. Another uh, very important structure 
it is called spinel structure right the formula um, just like abo3 here the compound is slightly different it is a ab2o4 ab2o4 so it's again a compound of two different oxides one is ao and there is b2o3 okay one is ao and there is b2o3 so uh, together forms ab2o4 so a is a divalent metal b is a trivalent metal and then oxygen okay so there are large number of compounds in this spinel structure also in fact perovskite and spinel there are huge number of compounds available in this particular structure now the description um, uh, is like this uh, these are these are a cations okay red ones here is a cations small cations in oxygen tetrahedron so once again it's a cubic structure in which both tetrahedral sides and octahedral sides are available and both of them are occupied may not be fully but at least to a certain extent so you have two different metals uh, one is a and there is b and uh, well to be specific a can be magnesium and b can be aluminum so uh, it is become uh, magnesium oxide and al2o3 mgo al2o3 or mg al2o4 this particular compound just like calcium fluoride has a mineralogical name uh, which is called fluorite or sodium chloride has a mineralogical name like rock salt here magnesium aluminate has a uh, mineralogical name spinel and that is the reason uh, the structure type is called spinel oh i forgot to mention that perovskite is the mineralogical name of calcium titanate okay that is the reason calcium titanate as a structure type and that is known as uh, spinel uh, that is known as perovskite whereas magnesium aluminate uh, the mineralogical name is spinel and that is the reason uh, this particular crystal structure is called spinel structure there may be many compounds having this particular structure so the, once again coming back to the description here uh, both octahedral and tetrahedral sites are occupied partly not fully partly occupied and uh, a site or a cation in this case the magnesium magnesium goes to the tetrahedral side so magnesium ion has a fourfold coordination whereas aluminum we have seen earlier in case of al2o3 or corundum structure that aluminum has a sixfold coordination so aluminum prefers to go to the sixfold coordination all the time in any compound uh, except in certain if there are exceptions of course uh, but normally aluminum goes to the octahedral side and magnesium goes to the tetrahedral side which also indicates that the cationic size of the or the ionic radii of the magnesium is much smaller and uh, that of aluminum is larger so that's what it is also mentioned here that smaller cation goes to the tetrahedral side and larger cation goes to the octahedral side now here in this structure looks little complex but actually there are eight units of the cube if you look at carefully they will find out eight units of the cube okay so uh, in the structure or in the spinel structure there are again two uh, kind of varieties or two kind of types two types of spinel structures are available uh, not one type uh, this is one type where we have said that all the a ions goes to the tetrahedral side and all the b ions goes to the octahedral side uh, in this is what is called the normal spinel mg 
Al2O4 is actually having a normal spinal structure and that is also called normal spinal. There is another variety of uh, spinal structure which is called inverse spinal structure, inverse spinal structure in which there is a redistribution, in which there is a redistribution of the uh, cations, the two types of cations which is present A and B cations. So, <coughs> uh, B particularly the B cations which are larger cations are normally goes to the octahedral sites. In an inverse spinal structure the situation is slightly different. In the inverse spinal structure half of B goes to the tetrahedral site. Okay. Half of B goes to the tetrahedral site and half remains here. So, in an inverse spinal structure actually all the K, A cations remains in the tetrahedral site, but part of B also goes to the tetrahedral site and that is because some of the cations in some of these situations some of the cations actually have a borderline situation so far as the radius ratio is concerned. Radius ratio is such that they can go to the octahedral as well as the tetrahedral site okay. and therefore, uh, those structures are different from the normal spinal structure. Although the basic uh, consideration is same, but uh, if you go to the details of the structure there will be some difference and that is very important and that particular redistribution, redistribution of some of these cations uh, give rise to many interesting properties, particularly when you talk about magnetic properties. Okay. In fact, it is this redistribution or the inverse spinal structure which is important uh, for magnetic properties. You will find uh, uh, when B, B cation is <coughs> iron and the iron can have two different uh, uh, valence states. Okay. So, one is uh, 2 plus and another is 3 plus iron of course, in this case it will be <coughs> 3 plus and Fe 2 O 3. So, that whenever the Fe 2 O 3 is there then that spinal structure will have a inverse spinal structure. Okay. One example is for example, here you can see the manganese, nickel, cobalt and iron. Okay. Manganese 2 plus, nickel 2 plus, cobalt 2 plus and iron it can um, both has 2 plus as well as 3 plus states. So, that way uh, iron can be present both in the tetrahedral side and in the octahedral side. Uh, whereas, these are normal spinal when zinc is there that is a normal spinal structure zinc these are also 2 plus these are also 2 plus. Okay. So, it is actually a a cation a is a 2 plus. Okay. So, when zinc is a is zinc or magnesium or barium they go to the tetrahedral site whereas these ones these ones also goes to the tetrahedral site but part of the trivalent ion also comes to the tetrahedral site and that's why this mo meo sorry me 2 plus oxygen that is AO and B2O3, B2O3, B is 3 plus. When these things, this one of the compounds is Fe, Fe that is called ferrite. Okay. So, the ferrites has another, they are not from the point of view of the crystal structure, they are point of view from the their properties. So, ferrite Fe2O3 when B 2 O 3 is Fe 2 O 3 then that compound or that spinal compound is called ferrites and ferrites normally has inverse spinal structure right. 
part of a t a p 3 plus remains at the octahedral site and part of it half of it goes to the tetrahedral site. And that is how it creates a magnetic property very important for many different applications. So, the ferrites do have a inverse spinel structure, but aluminates, aluminates that means when the B cation is aluminum, it has a, spin, a normal spinel structure. Chromium can also have both structures, uh, both inverse spinel as well as normal spinel. So, depending on which particular cation you are getting involved in, in the compound, the structure will go change. Okay. So, that is what is the description of the spinel structure and it is quite both perovskites and spinel are very important structures so far as the oxides are concerned and we will see later on that many of the properties are depend uh, do depend on this particular structure type or the description where exactly the cations are present. Well, having discussed uh, all the different kind of uh, some of the oxides, uh, let us look at one of the very important oxide which is uh, very common for ceramic materials that is silica SiO2. Silica just like alumina, aluminum oxide is a very important constituent of uh, ceramic group of materials. So, let us try to look at what is the silica compound silica SiO2 and uh, uh, what are the different compounds uh, based on uh, silica. In fact, there are a large variety of silicates because silica pure silica is also available. So, that is a uh, important constituent of glass, glass making. In addition of course, it gets combined with many other cations or many other oxides and forms many different kind of silicates. Uh, these silicates are very important raw materials for uh, ceramics, particularly traditional ceramic materials. As we have discussed earlier, the traditional ceramics, most of the traditional ceramic raw materials are naturally occurring and they are some form of silicates. Okay. Silica is one of the major constituents. In addition to silica of course, there are many other cations, sometimes they are quite complex, complex structures and in addition to other uh, cations, there may be uh, some hydroxyl ions. So, in fact, many of the silicates do have a hydroxyl ion present there and that determines some of the very important uh, surface property of silicates. In fact, one of the properties of silicate is the plasticity and because when you mix with water, it forms a um, kind of uh, suspension and that suspension depending on the amount of the water, uh, you can have a good uh, stable suspension or you can have a plastic mass, you can deform those materials. Their uh, presence of uh, water actually uh, makes the material more plastic, not in the completely dried form, but when it is present in the uh, in presence of water. So, uh, silicate structures are very, very important uh, for the traditional ceramic raw materials. So, let us try to look at some of the structures available to us. Uh, the basic consideration of silicate structure is what we call the SiO4 tetrahedron. Silicon in presence of oxygen forms a tetrahedral coordination fourfold coordination is a very important tetrahedron so far as uh, the oxide structures are concerned. So, the basic building block in most of the silicates almost all silicates is this tetrahedron. Silicon is the center of the tetrahedron and it is coordinated by uh, a regular tetrahedron consisting of four oxygen ions. Silicon the cation size is much smaller compared to oxygen and it forms uh, a kind of molecule right a kind of molecule like this or <coughs> a, 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 a some kind of a complex ion. So, if you have SiO4, SiO4 
uh, S i is 4 plus, it is a tetra uh, tetravalent cation and oxygen is 2 minus. So, you have actually net positive charge of 4 minus. So, all silicon oxygen tetrahedron has a 4 minus negative charge, uh, uh, some kind of a, uh, um, a complex ion. So, if this 4 uh, positive charge has to be a positive 4 negative charge has to be satisfied by combining with other groups and uh, that way uh, it can uh, have many complex uh, structures. Now, when two of such units are joined together by a common oxygen, okay, this particular oxygen is uh, common to this tetrahedron and also the other tetrahedron. So, this is a common oxygen between two neighboring tetrahedrons right and uh, this is what we call a bridging oxygen. It bridges, bridges between this tetrahedron and the other tetrahedron. So, it is also a very common phenomena in any silicate structure that there are presence of bridging oxygen and non bridging oxygen we will come to that later on, but mostly when a oxygen is common or the oxygen bond is satisfied, one bond one negative charge is with this silicon and another negative charge is satisfied with this silicon, then it is a bridging oxygen, there is no extra uh, negative charge sitting on this, whereas these are non bridging oxygen, these are non bridging oxygen because some other cations can be uh, can join or can combine uh, with this oxygen. Okay. So, the total the overall complex or the overall uh, uh, ion is S i 2 O 7 6 minus, okay. this is S i O 4 4 minus, this is S i 2 O 7 6 minus. And then you can also have another kind of a structure again an unit a structural unit like this. Okay. So, this will also have a unsatisfied bonds at the outer, sur uh, outer surface or uh, uh, outside this ring, uh, whereas this has only one bridging oxygen, whereas in the form of a ring it can have three different uh, bridging oxygens. Okay. So, this is a isolated silicon oxygen tetrahedron, this is a two of them have combined together and here three of them have been combined. This is one silicon, this is another silicon, another silicon and forming a ring. Okay. And uh, this oxygen of course, are still unsatisfied the charges and therefore, it has a net negative charge S i 3 O 9. So, there are one oxygen, a uh, one silicon, two silicon and three silicon. So, these are uh, the groups, uh, the repeating groups one can have in different silicate structures. It can also have much larger rings like six of them, six of them forming an hexagon kind of ring, a kind of benzene ring. Okay. So, uh, this is silicon, uh, six of the tetrahedron are joined together and uh, six of the oxygen uh, had satisfied or been shared between two neighboring silicon ions and therefore, there are six bridging oxygens and forming a hexagonal ring and the net negative charge is 12 minus S i 6 O 18 12 minus. Okay. You can ha also have this kind of a chain, okay. you can have a form a chain, uh, earlier we have seen two of them can be joined, two of them can be joined and you can uh, have S i 2 uh, S i 2 O 7 6 minus, we have seen that. So, only one ox bridging oxygen, but this can be extended further, this can be extended further instead of two you can have 3, 4 and go on, it can go on endlessly. 
just like a polymer chain. So, it is a kind of inorganic polymer chain as it is. So, you can have uh, SI O 3, SI O 3, SI O 3 uh, num depending on the number of such units you can have n and the total charge of negative charge will be 2 n minus and this particular kind of structure is known as pyroxene structures or pyroxene silicates. It is also possible, it is also possible as I said there are very complex situations so far as the silicon oxygen network is concerned, uh, it is some kind of a network uh, with uh, as if there is a polymerization with monomers. So, uh, these are the units or monomers are getting together and forming a chain. Now, we have seen a single chain here there is a double chain okay, that means one chain is this one, one pyroxene chain is here, another pyroxene chain is also more or less parallel, but they are not isolated, they are not isolated they are connected, they are connected between these two chains as if there is a what we call a cross linking, cross linking of polymers. So, this is one polymeric chain and this is another polymeric chain and there is a cross linkage, cross linkage through a common oxygen ion. So, this silicon ion and this silicon ion sharing one particular oxygen, then this silicon ion and this silicon ion is sharing another oxygen and once again there is a sharing of oxygen in the here you can. You must notice that all the silicons are not sharing, sharing between the two chains. For example, this silicon and this silicon is not uh, sharing, but this one is sharing. So, it is normally or it the structural requirements or the uh, uh, requirements is that alternate silicon ions are actually sharing oxygen between them and therefore, a bonding is taking place between the two parallel chains and that kind of uh, structures or this uh, silicates are called amphibules and uh, this is the unit SI 4 O 11 which uh, n 6 and minus that is a simple calculation. Okay. So, amphiboles uh, another variety of silicates. So, depending on the silicon oxygen arrangement the how the uh, tetrahedron is there between their neighbors. Uh, you have different kind of structures, different kind of properties and of course, uh, and the different uh, applications. Uh, this is in summary we have seen you can see there are if you the isolated silicon oxygen tetrahedron these are called olivine structure, this is called beryl structure. Okay. Uh, uh, the, there can be rings, I have given you uh, two examples of uh, three member ring, six member ring, but it can be a four member ring also. So, there are uh, different compounds present beryl, zeolite and bentonite. Uh, we will not be discussing too much about these things, because they are basically false in the traditional ceramics arena and this course is uh, on uh, advanced ceramics. So, we will be uh, discussing mostly on the advanced ceramic compounds, but uh, silicates being one of the major constituents of ceramics uh, particularly radical, traditional ceramics just have a uh, idea what are they. Uh, these are single chains pyroxenes we have discussed already, amphiboles the double chain this is one chain and this is another chain and forming a kind of hexagon in between. And then there is the next variety is called sit silica, because there is a it is a two chain, but if this extends in the other directions also a large number of chain forming a basically a sit structure, okay. a horizontal sit structure they are all 
in the form of uh, a large number of chains as if a large number of units have been put together in two different direction x and y direction not in the z direction. Z direction uh, the bonding will be different and we will see that later on uh, how the z directions also uh, gets bonded together. Uh, normally uh, these bonds the z direction bonds are much weaker than the x y z direction uh, bonds. So, this is what we call the silica structure sil uh, seed silicate structure mica is one of the examples of this. So, arranging SiO 4 tetrahedron in different silicates <coughs> the exception is in the seed that extends indefinitely in all directions all directions in the plane. So, these are the best known ways of combining or not combining the SiO 4 tetrahedra. So, okay. so, this is the different arrangements of SiO 4 tetrahedra which is the basic unit of the building block of all the silicate structures and they that building block is combined with the next building block in different patterns and different forms and that is how we get different kind of silicates. Well, I think uh, uh, besides of course, uh, silicates uh, we have not discussed much about the pure silica. Silica as it is on its own uh, also is a very good important ceramic raw material and the, it is not does not combine with others. It is called silica is basically a network structure where uh, all the oxygen ions we have seen in earlier structures. Uh, you see uh, all oxygens are not combining with silica. Okay. So, some of the oxygen is combining with silica and the rest unfilled or unsatisfied bond has to be satisfied with other cations which has not been discussed here. But in a silica pure silica structure all the oxygen will be a kind of bridging oxygen that means only bond between silicon and oxygen and that is satisfies the complete uh, charge compensation or uh, charge neutrality right. So, there is no other cation is needed for combining with oxygen and therefore, in any silicate structure uh, it is actually uh, what we call a framework structure or network structure and therefore, only oxygen and silicon satisfy all the bonds of silicon as well as uh, oxygen and therefore, you have a, a, a repeating unit of this kind of uh, tetrahedrons. These are tetrahedrons they are arranged. So, these are actually these molecules these molecules silicon oxygen molecules will form uh, are arranged in a particular geometric pattern and that actually gives you the uh, complete silicate structure silica structure SiO2. Now, there are different polymorphic forms of silica we will discuss that maybe in the next class and uh, let us finish it here for the time being. Thank you so much.